OK, so first of all, if you didn't see it, uh, I posted up on Slack this morning. We have uh, announced the date for our hackathon, which is going to be April 13th, 2019. So this is the CS hackathon, April 13th. 2019, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's a Saturday. Okay, this is required for all Lippman classes. If you are not able to make the hackathon, there should be plenty of uh, head lead time for you to get off work or something like that. There is an alternative penalty assignment, and it sucks. Go ahead. 8 a.m. The whole 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 time, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, I divide the teams. Um, we usually have something in the ballpark of 40 to 50 total people. I divide the teams up between uh, inexperienced programmers, including no experience, maybe a 150 student or something like that, uh, as well as seniors in computer science, and then we work on a real life. Uh, problem involving some tool that you probably haven't been exposed to before. Um, this hackathon, the subject is actually maybe a little bit more boring than some past ones have been, but it's also probably the most practical we've done in a while. Uh, one thing we've noticed, a lot of our graduating uh, seniors haven't necessarily ever had the experience of dealing with like, user registration and user authentication. So we're going to be using um, Google's cloud computing platform called Firebase and their built-in authentication model to have you build a registration screen and an authentication screen in either Android, iOS, or web um, and working with their stuff and then having a managed user profile screen. So things that aren't necessarily super, super exciting from the... Uh, um, like, hey, look, I have this cool VR application, but something that is super, super practical from the um, uh, a skill set perspective. I'll try to give a little twist on it that makes it uh, somewhat fun, but uh, trust me, you will learn a lot during these uh, hackathons. How many of you have been to one of the hackathons already? Okay, uh, one and a half people. All right, so. Um, if you go on to Slack and you ask any of our um, uh, sophomores, juniors, seniors, people, they'll all say how important the hackathons are. You'll learn far more in that 12-hour period than a lot of times you'll learn in an entire semester in a class or something like that. Huh? Oh, we give you food. Oh, yeah, it comes with free food uh, here in CS. So just, yeah, meet in the CS suite here or something like that. Yeah, so breakfast, it's usually, you know, well, we have coffee out all the whole time with like cure eggs and crap. Um, I don't know, there's bagels and muffins and bre you know, breakfast-y stuff. Um, and then lunch is usually, um, I don't know, either pizzas or like Quiznos or something like that. Uh, and then uh, dinner is the other <laughs> pizza or Quiznos, whatever you didn't have for, uh, uh, for lunch. And if you have any special dietary needs, gluten-free, stuff like that, um, just message uh, Professor Locklear, but it, he's the one you sign up with. Um, so Joshua.Locklear at uw.edu, and then I run the hackathon during the during the thing. Okay, um, I think you'll find any of your other CS teachers will probably strongly encourage you to attend. I don't know how many of them require it, but I do. So if you choose not to. Uh, participate or whatever, that's fine. Um, there's an assignment that I give you as an alternative that will be equivalent to 12 hours of work and it's not fun. But, no, no, it's a nasty paper that you are not gonna like, so don't do it. All right, so let's talk about the assignment. All right, so I'll just go ahead and gut this guy. This is our test test PY thing. 
Um, all right, so we were supposed to read in from the user a number of seconds. All right. All right, so I'm going to say num seconds is equal to, and I'll go ahead and do my input thing, so I'll kind of show you how I usually write this portion of it. I'll, so I say input, please enter a number of seconds. Okay, now that's going, going to come in as a string. We want it as an integer, so we were we went shopping at Home Depot last class and learned that we have a uh, function called int that will convert a string into an integer. Make sense? Okay, so this will read into num seconds a number of seconds, presuming you type in something that is numeric. Okay, so now I have num seconds. Now we're supposed to print out um, num, uh, what? years, days, hours, minutes, seconds, those guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, let's do it this way. Seconds, I'm just gonna create a bunch of variables so we uh, uh, see how this guy works. So I'm gonna say seconds in minutes is equal to 60, right? seconds in hours is equal to seconds in minutes times 60, right? 60 minutes in one hour, 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, then seconds in days is equal to seconds in hours times 24 seconds in years is equal to seconds in days times 365 okay we're only supposed to go to years right okay so now I have my um, my variables for all the different breakdowns. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a variable called current, just call it I don't know, divider or something like that. Okay, and this is going to be seconds in days times seconds in, actually I probably wanted to say years first just to keep them in the right order doesn't matter, but seconds in years times seconds in days times seconds in hours times seconds in minutes, something like that for right now. All right, so my current divider is going to be that guy. So the first thing we're going to want to print out is number of years. We're going to start at the top level. So this is now where it kind of becomes similar to our uh, dollars, quarters uh, question. Now, you didn't need to create all these variables like this. I know I saw, looked at some of the work already, and some of you actually did the math and had this giant number for numbers and seconds and stuff like that. We're going to get those same numbers this way, right? Yeah. All right, so... I said, hey, this is the number of seconds that's in one minute. This is the number of seconds that's in one hour. That's the number of seconds in minutes times 60. Here's the number of seconds in one day. That's the number of seconds in hours times 24. So on and so forth. So this current divider guy is going to be that giant number you started off with. Make sense? All right, so that'll be 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. That's what that guy will come out to be. All right. Um, but by doing it this way, now our variables feel meaningful, right? As opposed to maybe in your assignment, you, you know, when you first did your first, you know, here's the number of seconds or the number of, uh, what was it, days at the top level? You know, your, or in your years, years at the top level. Here's the, for the number of years, you had number of seconds divided by random giant number. 
And you're like, well, what the heck does that number mean? That's okay for your assignment, but do you see maybe the weakness with that? Yeah. When you go back and look at that in uh, six months, you're like, well, where did I get that number from? Okay, where this spells it out a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and the first thing we're gonna get is we're going to get days. Oh, years, sorry. I, I should have assigned days, that's where I'm gonna stick with. Okay, so years is going to be our total num seconds that we read in divided by current divider, right? Okay, then we're gonna say, we're gonna whittle down num seconds. So num seconds is equal to num seconds mod current divider. So far so good. All right, so I take my huge number of seconds that we entered in, well, potentially huge. I divide it using integer division. That's what this guy does, is divide it using integer division. Don't give me a decimal place. All right, and that'll give me the number of years. Could even be zero if you didn't put in very many seconds. Probably a lot of your examples was zero. All right, then we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna update num seconds to be whatever it started off as or whatever it currently was when divided by current divider, give me the remainder. How many seconds are left over after I took my years out of it? Make sense? Then I need to whittle down current divider. So I'll say current divider is equal to current divider. Now I can actually do a normal divide if I want because I know that it will be evenly divisible by it, but we'll do the integer division. So current divider and the thing we're going to take off of there is um, seconds in years, right? Divided by seconds in years. There's no long, we're done with the, we're done with the years part of this guy, right? <clears throat> so the next one we're going to do is going to be seconds in days. Okay. So understand what we did here. We calculated our number of years. Then we said, let's update our number of seconds. How many seconds do we have left? Then we updated our current divider to no longer have in it the value for years. Okay. All right, next we're going to have, and here I'll put some spaces in here just so we can see it a little clearer. So I will say days is equal to the current number of seconds divided by current divider, which is an updated number now, right? Then we'll say num seconds, sorry, num days, no, num seconds, is equal to num seconds mod current divider. So update num seconds. Then current divider is equal to current divider divided by seconds in days. Cut that guy off. All right, next is we have, we have num hours. Hours is equal to num seconds divided by current divider. Update num seconds is equal to num seconds mod current divider. Then update current divider is equal to current divider divided by seconds in hours. Cut that guy off. Minutes. is equal to num seconds divided by current divider. Num seconds is equal to num seconds mod current divider. And then current divider is equal to current divider divided by seconds in minutes. 
Now, our last one is just the seconds that are left over, right? So we actually probably didn't even need to do this final whittle down because we're done with math. So finally, we can just say seconds is equal to num seconds. Didn't need a variable for that, but if we're just being explicit here, you know, during all of these, I kept whittling down num seconds. So in the end, my number of seconds for my output will be whatever's less left in num seconds. All right, so now I'm going to print out my results. So I'll print years. Uh, let's see, I showed you the, we did the end space thing last time, right? Okay. I'm going to show you a new way of doing it today. steal that dude here just for time and then we'll say print years print days print days print hours minutes oh <laughs> threw a little job in there no semicolons at the end of those lines although it will actually work Python will just think it's weird print seconds Like that. All right, so we did all of our calculation stuff up here. And what's this guy called? Test.py. Go out to my terminal. Where was this stored? My desktop. Yep. Number of seconds, I don't know. So zero years, zero days, 57 hours, 561 minutes, 18 seconds. Something like that. We'll just assume that's correct. I think it is. So <laughs> we've tested this uh, verbosely here. Go ahead. Um, you said 57 hours. Wouldn't that be 10 days? Um, actually, it's a good point. That is a good point. Let's make sure I did all my variables correctly up here since I confused so many variable names. So, number of seconds and minutes is good. Seconds and hours is seconds and minutes times 60. Seconds and days is seconds and hours times 24. Seconds and years is seconds and days mm -hmm. times 365. And then my current divider is going to be all those guys multiplied by each other. It could be my big divider. So years should be my number of seconds that I entered in divided by current divider. So what was my example of number of seconds I put in here? This guy right here. And my current divider should be 60 times 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 365 days. So it should be that guy, right? That's for years. Oh, yeah. So that guy? Okay. So that should be, uh, what's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's due to eight. All right, so that's less than one year. So the divide will be a zero. So we take this first thing here. So years will be this number divided by this, which will give me a zero. And then num seconds will be all the seconds left over. Right? So my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds left over. Current divider then becomes current divider divided by seconds in years. 
which will be, oh, that's my huge number. So this guy should actually just be divided by 365. This guy should be divided by 24. This guy should be divided by 60. This guy should be divided by 60. So we'll just keep walking through it. So my current divider ends up being whatever it just was. So that's this guy divided by 365. And that gives me 86,400, which is my number of seconds in a day. Is that right? Number of seconds in a, yeah, in a day. So then this next one will be number of seconds divided by current divider. Um, and that'll give me that. If I hadn't done the current divider thing, probably the clearer way of doing this would have been divide by seconds in years, divide by seconds in days, divide by seconds in hours, and then whatever's left over. But we'll whittle it down this way. So some of these variables became a little bit unnecessary. All right, so days is going to be equal to whatever's left from my num seconds, which is actually all of my number second number of seconds from the first part. I didn't use any of them because we didn't even have one year. Divided by current divider, which was what my current divider started off as whittled down by 365. We took the years part of it off. Okay. Then that'll give us some number. So if I do, so this is 86,400. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all my num seconds are left. Divided by that should give me 142 um, days from that. Okay, so days should be 142 here, years should be zero. Now I need to get my remainder of this guy. So the point. my divisor so 123 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 is equal to that number of seconds might be easier to show this in a spreadsheet actually let's do it this way this way we can check our work each time through, I'll print out number of seconds. So every single time I whittle it down, we'll print out number of seconds. So we can see that guy change. Okay. And I'll print it out before my very first one as well, just so we prove that we read in what we thought we read in. All right, so no, this is still bad. these up here
that's what you get for putting a zillion variables in there. Sorry, in the right place. Right here, divided by 365, divided by three. Let's just look at it whittle down here. So why does that guy come out? Well, that should be zero. Seconds left is 123, 456, 7, 8. something stupid in here. So years is seconds and years. All right, so my total number of seconds divided by seconds and years, that should give me the number of years. This case should be zero. Num seconds will be whatever num seconds is divided by seconds and years. That should whittle down. I'll print out years. I'll print out years for days. It's seconds in days, which is equivalent to whatever the big number you came up with was. Whittle down seconds in days. Well, whittle down num seconds by seconds in days. That's what's left over. I don't need this guy here. Hours is seconds in hours. I don't need this guy. Whittle it down by seconds in hours. This is seconds in minutes. Seconds in minutes. Whittle it down. And then we should have seconds left over after we divide by seconds in minutes here. And this guy, seconds in years, should be 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. That's our big number, right? Seconds in days should be that. Forty-two days, twenty-one hours, twenty-one minutes, eighteen seconds. That looks correct. So, what stupid math was I doing before? If I take this giant number and I divide it by three sixty-five, that should have left me with seconds and days. If I took that number and I divided it by twenty-four, that should have left me with seconds and hours. Is that right? Sixty times sixty times twenty four times three sixty five. That's my big number, right? And that's the number it should go to. Yeah, seems right. I don't have the current code that I wrote. I must have been doing something stupid in there. Anybody notice what I did?
So I wanted to have a single divisor just to show whittling that guy down, kind of doing the math in reverse. So I started it off as this. Oh, 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 oh. The problem was that divisor should have started off in seconds and years, not seconds and years times seconds and days times seconds and hours times seconds and minutes. I turned it into this gigantic crazy number that where I wasted my time doing all of this. All right, so my error was the one line I had right here where I had my current divisor as being this insane huge number that wasn't even an accurate number. This is a better way of doing it anyways. This is the better use of individual variables. So rather than you having your, uh, um, you doing the math and having your first thing divide by big number, your second thing divide by a little bit smaller number, but still big number, so on and so forth. Now we're able to say years is num seconds divided by seconds and years, whatever that number is. You happen to have already done that calculation, but now we know that inside of this variable is kind of the crazy scary number, but that crazy scary number we now know is the number of seconds in a single year. Does that make sense? So this variable right here makes more sense than that value right there, just randomly. Go ahead. Uh, are you gonna post this? Yeah, I'll post it. Okay. <laughs> I'll put it up on Slack. And now the official thing teachers should always do is like when I said I made this mistake and I say, oh, well, I did that on purpose hoping one of you would catch it. <laughs> okay, yeah. sure. But none of you did, so F for the day, whole class. Just wait a minute, just wait one second. All right, but do you, most important thing here is I, I tried to kind of go with tons and tons of variables to give us lots of practice and variables and ended up making a stupid mistake because of it. But important lesson here is do you understand how that variable is more meaningful to us and like that's the number of seconds in a year than me randomly just having this big number there? I mean, you look at it for a few minutes, you can maybe figure out how you calculated that yeah. number. But the reality is, is, if you went back and look at this code in six months, you might say, well, where did I get that from? Make sense? Where if I calculated it someplace else, I, have, I put it inside a variable that has a meaningful name, I now know that's the number of seconds in a year. And that's how I calculated years. Got it? And then we kept whittling it down, whittling it down, whittling it down. Um, now, in the assignment, did I say uh, it should keep asking over and over again? Mm -hmm. I don't remember if I did or not. No. I don't really okay. Let's go ahead and make it do that anyways. I care more about the logic here. I wanted to practice more with the variables. All right, so I'm just going to take all of this, cut it for a second, and I'll just throw, you know, we go into our toolbox. We bought last week a while loop from uh, Home Depot, okay, and a while loop says, do all the stuff inside the body of this guy, as long as this Boolean expression is true, okay? We would call this guy an infinite loop. Oh, that's another nice thing that uh, Adam does for you. So let's just say you wrote a function, in this case I have, you know, I have a bunch of code with stuff indented underneath it. Let's assume I'm comfortable with what I have indented underneath that right now, and I think it's good, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of our coding text editors let yeah. you do that, but that kind of makes it less crazy stuff all over the screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in any case, as long as this boolean expression is true, we'll do all of this stuff. Now, for right now, we're using this as kind of a hack. All right, because while true, this would be something called an infinite loop, and we would say infinite loops are kind of bad. Um, realistically speaking. Uh, I would say an infinite loop isn't necessarily always a bad thing. There is a use for it. Um, but for right now, I would say in your mind, you should just say an infinite loop is probably not what you, an infinite loop is what you end up doing by accident, not because you're meant to do it. Even though in this case, we just wanted to keep asking us over and over again. Okay. So this guy will never fail. So I would have to quit my program, you know, by force. 
So control C will get you out of it on a, uh, any sort of Unix terminal. Same thing, you're on Sigwin, which is a Unix terminal. Okay. Yep. All right, so for right now, this little tool, we just happened, we're, we don't have a whole lot of practice in writing Boolean expressions yet. So when, we'll, when we wanna be able to test something over and over and over again, we're just kinda using like the default setting of our while loop, you know, without really thinking through a, um, uh, a Boolean expression. So let me go ahead and paste this onto Slack. And we'll call this guy number of seconds solution. All right, so that is in the 200 channel on Slack. All right, so let's learn some new stuff. So once again, we're gonna run over to Home Depot and we're going to buy a couple of things. All right, so, so uh, um, we're gonna find this thing called, uh, um, well actually, let's first look at this. So we've, we've seen them already because we've printed out like hello world and stuff like that, but strings in Python as well as most programming languages are Opening double quote followed by zero or more characters followed by closing double quote. Okay? So, for example, hello world is a string. So is double quote, double quote. That's the empty string. And that's kind of an important one. Knowing about this empty string sometimes allows you to uh, um, accomplish some things that might otherwise seem difficult to accomplish. It's not as powerful in Python as it is in some other languages, but it's still important for you not to discount the string that contains nothing as being useless. And the reason I say that is in a language like Java, let's say, so I'll just give you a, a legitimate Java example. Let's say I have an int a is equal to five. And then I wanna say a string s, and I want it to be the um, string version of a. I can say empty string concatenated with a. This is the concatenation operator in uh, Java, and we'll talk about concatenation in a second. And Java only requires one side of it to be a string. So if I want to turn the value contained in A, I got to resolve A to its value, which in this case, its value is five. That guy's an int. If I want to turn that guy into a string, I can either convert him into a string, which is what we need to do in Python, or I can effectively convert him into a string in Java by saying, I'm going to start with the string of nothingness. And since that is a string, this is the concatenation operator, and I'll just tack the five onto the end of it. So this will give me the string five in Java, as well as C Sharp, as well as many, many, many languages. Okay, Python's concatenation operator uh, is also the plus sign, but its rules are a little tighter. In Java, I said only one side needs to be a string. Python requires both sides to be a string. So let me talk about that here. I'm not gonna ask you Java stuff, so that's why I took it out of there. I just wanted to show you um, a reason why that uh, empty string thing is, is pretty powerful. So don't just discount it as being worthless. So then string concatenation, this is how we glue two or more strings together. The operator is the plus sign. All right, so for example, hello concatenated with world would give us hello world. 
No spaces, because I didn't put any spaces in here. If I want a space, I can do this. Or I could have just tacked an extra space onto the end of hello or a space before the world. That makes sense? Now, if I wanted to say hello concatenated with a five, expecting to get hello five, Python will scream at me. Okay? Python says that the concatenation operator only works if both sides are strings. Otherwise, it's addition. Plus sign is usually for math, right? And it requires both for it to be treated as the uh, addition operator, both sides need to be mathable, addable, right? <laughs> Something we can do uh, numbers with. Okay, so with that in mind, we have a function called str similar to the int one we already have. In fact, did I even sh did I show you str before? I know I showed you a couple of functions. I didn't remember if I just did one. No, we just talked about int last time for getting our number out of our string. Okay, so we have another converter function um, called str that takes a value as a parameter and this returns the string version of val, whatever val is. But it has to make sense, right? So whatever you pass that has to be something that it would make sense to turn into a string. So for example, if I say str123 um, plus, actually that would probably work. Um, I'm trying to think maybe we haven't had objects yet, but I can't give you a great example right now. Once we build objects, I can give you a good one. But it has to be stringable. It's got to be something that it would make sense to a human being for that to be able to be converted into a string. Okay, so I can say that uh, something like this. I can say A is equal to hello concatenated with the string version of 5. That would then give me hello five because both sides of it are strings make sense all right so pretty important uh, tool for us is to be able to spin through and um, can well is to be able to glue is to be able to build strings through concatenation so we're going to call concatenation a pretty powerful thing because we can build strings with concatenation. But we need to be careful in Python because the concatenation operator, the plus sign, does require both sides to be strings. There's also a function called concat that'll do some automated stuff for us, but don't worry about that. We're just going to think about it from the plus sign operator because that'll help us understand concatenation in other languages as well. Okay, so concatenation is the act of gluing strings together to build strings and the operator is the plus sign and python requires both sides to be strings but lucky for us we have a little convenience function here called str that will convert a non-string into a string now a couple of you well maybe several of you have accidentally run into this thing before so if i go in and type in python but i forget to type in my uh, name of my file i just press enter it puts you into this Python interpreter. Okay, so this allows you, this is almost like a, a little sandbox. This allows you to type in Python stuff and see it work in real time. So this is a good way to practice things. So if I say A is equal to hello concatenated with five, notice it screams at me and says, must be a string, not an int. 
Okay, if instead I say a is equal to hello concatenated with the string version of five, now it's cool with it. And if I just say a, it shows me what that guy is. Go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, she's saying if I say, well, here, we'll just do it this way. Hello, concatenated with five like that. Yeah, you can. I'm thinking more from the perspective of if you had like a um, variable called num and had it equal to five. Yeah, you can't do this. You can't say hello, concatenated with num. Well, you can. You'll just get hello num. Yeah. Where you really want hello concatenated with the string version of the variable name num. Okay. Good. Uh, and then you just type in, so in order to actually do this, you just type in Python you know, latest version or whatever you named it in. Yeah, the, the same command that you usually use to run your, to test your program, like whether it's Python yeah. um, test.py or Python 3 test.py, if you just type in Python yeah. or Python 3, it'll dump you into this and you can okay. mess around with stuff. And then to get out of this, you issue the Python command quit with open close parentheses. Okay. Uh, I will give you the next section in the book to read for Wednesday. We'll finish up uh, the stuff on uh, strings. Sorry, we took a little longer on the homework assignment because of a stupid mistake. But in any case, um, we will uh, start dealing with loops and strings next class. It was an intentional mistake. It just took the class too long to figure it out that I had to go through and go through the motions of. Uh, yeah, you have to explain everything. Actually, the funny thing is, you're going to have me in class for four years. That's going to be one of the rare occurrences I actually make a mistake in class. So, yeah, I I don't screw up very often. So keep keep track.